Hello and welcome to this crash course into getting started with scripting in QTM. My name is Oliver. I'm one of the software developers working on uh, QTM. And I'm going to be your guide today as we check out how to get started with QTM uh, scripting. One last thing before we do dive right into checking out the script examples. This is not the only way to go about scripting, right? You don't have to use these examples and look at them. This is just one viable approach. Using the demo scripts along with this crash course generally will be a more pleasant experience experience for, for people who have some experience in QTM and some experience with scripting. However, if that's not your cup of tea, you could dive directly into the documentation and start from scratch. The documentation will be linked in the description below. But I personally think using the demo scripts as a guide, it's just, it's a little bit faster to get started with some working examples. It contains everything you need and a little bit more access to helper functions, access to other functions that do useful things in QTM, that being the tools scripts. So with that out of the way, now let's dive right into the code. All right, so we're going to start by starting up QTM. Next, we're going to want to go to the QTM scripting GitHub. There will be a link in the description. Uh, what you want to do is go to the code button here. We're going to download as a zip. And uh, once you do that, you're going to have the zip file. And when you extract it, you're going to get this. And now we see we have these files here. We're going to go into the project options. We're going to scroll all the way down here to scripting. And then we're going to go ahead and add the two different scripting files that exist here. Uh, one of them is called the startup demo scripts. And the other one is startup tools. Worth mentioning, of course, is that there's this terminal button here. So you're going to want to click the terminal to get to this view to see what's happening. When we added the scripts, we got all these different printouts here. And now we see up here, we have a bunch of different menus. These different ones, the gap fill, marker set, filter, these are from the tool set. If you want to, you can go ahead and check out those and see what they do. But we're not going to focus on that. Instead, we're going to look at these script examples. So there's a bunch of different stuff here that you can check out. Feel free to pause the video and try some of the different things. And now once you've had a chance to check that out, we are are going to want to have Visual Studio Code or some other IDE, Integrated Development Environment. I prefer Visual Code, but uh, any IDE will do just fine. Although with that said, just one small caveat, you don't need to use Visual Code. You don't need to use any sophisticated IDE or anything like that. You could just stick to Notepad or Notepad++ or whatever text editing software you prefer, simply because you don't need to compile any of the code you're writing. You could just write it as text, save it, and queue then we'll do the rest. All right, let's continue. Open the folder that contains the scripts. It's important to open the root folder and the folder that contains all the demo scripts, including the tools. The main points of interest are these two startup files. Those are the ones that we opened up in QTM here. So we got the startup demo and startup tools, right? For this video, we're going to focus only on the demo script startup. So this is what's running when the script is executed in QTM. We have this function called add menu. Add menu is doing what it says it's doing, which is adding the menu. So if we go back in QTM here, look, these two menus is what it's adding, although it's, it's just adding one at a time. What we are going to do in this video is create our own startup demo scripts, not startup demo scripts, of course, because it's going to be our own startup. So we're going to want to create a new file called uh, startup custom. And this will be the startup file that we're going to want to add into QTM later. But first, we're going to put in some uh, some boilerplate code here. So now that I've copied all this code over from the startup demo scripts, let's just go through it really quickly. So the imports up here, standard Python libraries. Uh, this is the big one, the importing QTM. This is where we get all the functions, uh, API calls and stuff. We have this custom helpers class. Technically, it's not a class. It is the folder here that we're referencing, the different Python files within that we're extracting different functions from this helpers folder is another section to check out menu tools is quite interesting to look at selection is also nice moving on we have more imports from the demo scripts folder so this is where all the logic behind the different menus the overlays and the custom menu bar and all that stuff and then we have a bunch of variables that we're probably going to delete most of and then we have the private functions the so private functions are not meant to be called outside of the file itself and are prefaced by a underscore this function right here is quite interesting when when working with the QTM API, there's a function called set draw function. This is what is doing all the actual updating in terms of drawing. In the basic menu, we see that there's this text. It's more obvious when looking at the advanced menu. 
Okay, so while the 3D scene stuff and all that jazz is cool and interesting, I think what is more of interest to most users is the ability to create a menu like this. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this crash course. As I mentioned, we have this entry point. So every time you press this refresh button, for each startup script, run this code, if name main, which in essence means that it's this entire code right here that is being called when we refresh or run the script for the first time. So with all of that said, First and foremost, we're going to want to add this new script so we can turn off demo scripts for now and we're going to want to have our startup custom here. We can even turn off startup tools. Since it's a direct copy, it's going to do the exact same thing that demo scripts are doing. Let's begin by reducing this down. All right, so I've gone ahead and commented out a bunch of different things in this script that we don't need. Now, if we refresh, we are continuously calling drawing and updating nothing. I've just commented out everything and added this uh, printing function here to keep this a little simpler. We're just going to not even have the function and we're not going to be setting any draw function at all. So if we refresh again, it's gone. I'm going to go ahead and just remove all of this code. All right, a little bit better. I've kept this callback here just in case you want to try have something drawing in the 3D scene. This will be a reminder. I might as well quickly go over this. So you might have noticed that there is a reload script modules function defined in a lot of different files. If you do not call the import lib reload, what will happen is that when you click this reset button, it's not going to actually reload all of the files. There will be a file that's essentially cached and your running scripts, although updated at a more surface level, will still be using older versions of the scripts that you have been working on. Always make sure that when you're reloading your scripts that the changes you're making are being updated Anyways, that was an aside. So let's start with the most basic version, which is just to set up a menu from the start. So let's create a new function here. Set up menu. Let's just call it that. So something worth mentioning at this point is like when you're working with these functions, what does this even do? What is none? Why is it the first parameter? What does the index mean here? If at any point there's something that you don't know, this right here in the script examples will give you every possible function that you can call in the Qt library that you have access to. So for example, this function that we're looking at here, insert submenu, GUI, insert sub uh, menu submenu. So we'll go here, go to QTM GUI, and then we have insert menu submenu. So the handle of the menu, if null, which is none, then the main menu will be used. So basically what it's saying is that if you want to add a menu directly to this bar, then we're having the none value being input here. If on the other hand, you want to add a menu here into this, then you need to provide the ID of the menu that you created first. So we can go ahead and, and do that for our very first menu here. So we're going to create a custom menu, we are going to receive the menu ID when we create it. So none means it's going to be into the main bar, we're going to have the name here, which is custom menu, what was the third parameter, the index where the menu will be inserted. So if none, the sub menu will be inserted at the end. So we can just do none to clarify when you insert the menu, the number you provide here is the location where it's going to be inserted. So if you have none, it'll just be added to the very bottom. We can, while we're at it, insert a sub menu into the menu. So we add a menu into the menu that we already created. Duplicate this and just say sub menu, sub menu name. Go ahead and put that in. And again, we don't want to specifically say where it's going to be placed. So it's just going to be placed at the very bottom, which is the top since we have no items. We'll save that, reload, and... Why did it not work? We are not calling set up menu. And that is a good thing to do. You want to run the code that you are writing. There we go. And here we have a custom menu, which has a custom sub menu. Easy as that. And of course, you could go ahead and take it one step further and get the sub menu ID like this. Then you could go ahead and add your first item. So let's go back to the custom menu bar class. And let's find the uh, function that adds a menu item. It is a helper function. So if we go and check it out in the menu tools, we have a bunch of code here that is helping to add the menu item. The actual function call that inserts the menu button is right here. So it's GUI insert menu button. We could let's just have a quick check. Qtm GUI insert menu button. So we have the menu, which is the ID. If we don't provide one, 
it'll be added right here, which means that you can add a button directly to this menu, which yeah, I would not uh, recommend that. The text of the button, the command that executes, and then the index, again, where it's gonna be placed, you can just have none because we have no button, so we'll be added at the top. Let's go back, insert menu button. We're gonna want to have the sub menu ID. The text, as you can see there, is gonna be custom button name. You could also just have this inserted directly. You don't have to have a variable, it's up to you. We're gonna have our command here, so we're just gonna leave that blank for now. And none, because we don't care what the positioning is of the button. So the command needs to be added to QTM. You could directly add the command using the QTM interface. Let's put it in setup menu commands. So let's first check out what add command does does actually add command and the only parameter it takes is the name of the command and it also even says here in the description you, you're gonna need to use set command execute function and set command update function to set the behavior we'll ignore update for now so let's just focus on setting the command execute function and uh, where do we have that so set command execute function if we scroll down a little bit the function to invoke and the command uh, but not in that order so let's go ahead and do that qtm gui add command and we're gonna call it custom button command. And then we need to do set command execute function. And we're going to provide the name. In all of these other cases, funnily enough, we didn't actually need to set a variable, but in this case, it's a good idea to set a variable because it's being used in multiple places. And we'll call it custom button command like this. And we can use that here, here. And then what it's supposed to do. So here the actual functionality comes into play. You could, as I've done before here, define a Lambda that then calls another function that you've defined up here. And maybe that function calls another function and so on and so on. But we're gonna keep it simple. And I mean, obviously we need to call some function, but we're gonna call a native function instead. So we don't have to define anything. So custom button was pressed. And now we have added the command. We've added what's gonna be executed. Now we can go ahead and insert the menu button. So we've created our main menu. We've created the sub menu in that menu. And now we're gonna insert the button into the sub menus ID with the custom button name. And it's gonna call the command custom button command and the location of the button, we don't care about. So it's just gonna be added right at the bottom, which is the top because we have nothing there. So let's refresh and we don't have a button. And why do we have not have a button? It is because I didn't save the file. So we can refresh now and what's next? Invalid command. And that's because we use underscore here when we have not underscore up here. You should have a variable so you don't uh, make that mistake. And now we can refresh and voila, we have a custom button. That prints, custom button was pressed. Easy as that. Let's go ahead and add a, another button. It'll be added to the same menu. We'll call this button top button because we're gonna insert it at the very top. So let's add the name there. And then we can just use the, to keep it simple, use the same uh, command that we've already created and we'll put index zero. So now when we refresh, we should have a top button here. If we had put a one here, just to show you, it'll show up at the bottom. Now we have a menu with a sub menu and buttons and you can also add buttons here directly as well. I mean, we can show that because why not? So instead of adding it to the sub menu, we're adding it to the menu ID. We'll have a new name like this, custom button main, main menu button. And we'll go ahead and use that there. And we'll just for the sake of simplicity use the same command and we can have none. And now if you refresh, we will have a button here and it calls the same command. Perfect. Now let me just go ahead and clean up the code a little bit. Okay, so I've cleaned up the code a little bit. I left this part here in case we wanna import some custom stuff, a custom class maybe in the future. And I've left this one as well here in case we want to have some kind of 3D callback uh, drawing stuff in the future. But everything else it has been removed. Now what I've done is I've left this part here. There are helper functions you can use that I would recommend using as well, just to make it a little bit easier so you don't have to type all this uh, when adding menu items and menu buttons. So let's Let's just go ahead and add one last button here that uses the helper commands. And we're gonna go ahead as well and call a custom function that we've defined here. Let's begin by actually adding the command up here in the setup menu commands. And we can do that by adding the command. Again, these two functions that we're gonna use comes from the menu tools from the helpers folder. And the add command takes a name. So the name of the command, let's go ahead and define another one of those custom 
function command. So we're going to want to give that to the add command function. And then it also wants some kind of function to execute. So this is what I mean by you get a, it's a little bit easier, you don't have to have multiple lines, you can just add it directly. So let's go ahead and define the lambda, which in itself then is going to call the command that we have defined like this. And then lastly, we could add a update function, but we're gonna not do that. And now that we have the command added, we can just simply call the add menu item. Let's add it to the main menu. Why not? Uh, not the main menu, <laughs> main sub menu relative to the main menu and the text we want main button custom function and the command name which we saved as a variable custom function command there we go and now we can refresh and here we have a main button custom function and we press that this is a custom function that is attached to a command which is attached to a button so we're calling this print here and it's as easy as that one more thing that's worth mentioning i have it here in my custom menu bar class let's go ahead and scroll down and see if i can find it if you like to do some organizing you can add menu separators as well. So let's go ahead and add one of those. Let's begin by keeping it down here. We're going to specify the ID of the menu that we want to add the separator in and then we're going to use an index. And in this case, we want index zero one. So we're going to have one or maybe it's two actually, it might be two. Let's try one first. I'm going to refresh. Ah, it was two it's going to be inserted right there after button number two. But what you could do and what I would recommend doing you organize in the code from top to bottom how the buttons are going to be presented in the menu and then you can just not have a second uh, second parameter, we can remove actually all of these, I like to be explicit, but you can remove all these because it's just gonna put none there anyways, if we put this underneath like this, the line will show up at the bottom here, and we don't even see it. In fact, uh, we could add yet another button under Underneath. Uh, that won't work because we have an existing button. So we'll do like this. And now we have a main button custom function to underneath the line there. Yeah, so with this file here, this is all you need to get going with creating your own startup script file and a menu that you can begin inserting functions into. And of course, you can always use this custom menu that you've created and then import different helper functions, or you could even import functions from the startup tools and attach those buttons to different functions that have already been created there. Anything's possible, almost. Anyways, I'll make sure to clean this file up just a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and add that as a separate branch to the GitHub page. So you can go ahead and download this file directly. So if you found this helpful, please feel free to let us know we could potentially do another more advanced take on creating a menu in the form of a class that has different menus that you can toggle between there is a lot of logic that already exists for creating a toggle menu button feel free to go and check out the demo scripts on how that's done but a lot of the boilerplate for having a toggleable button already exists here in the helper functions I'm not going to dive into that in this video, but just to give you guys a little bit of an idea. Anyways, hopefully you found this crash course helpful. Hopefully it helps some of you get started with scripting. Feel free to let us know in the comments. And of course, if you have suggestions or questions on other parts of the QTM scripting interface that you'd like a video on, feel free to add those suggestions as comments as well. And maybe we'll make another couple of these videos. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day.